Welcome to our YouTube channel, Elegant Epoch Essence. Today, we have an exciting topic to dive into, the legendary Ava Ball. This extravagant event, hosted by Alva Vanderbilt, marked a pivotal moment in the history of New York's high society during the Gilded Age. Join us as we unravel the fascinating story behind this opulent soiree, its significance, and the jaw-dropping details that made it a talk of the town. So, sit back, relax, and prepare to be transported to a world of glamour and extravagance as we explore the captivating history of the Ava Ball. Alva Vanderbilt, not content with occasional social invitations, took a bold step to establish herself in New York society. She commissioned the architect Richard Morris Hunt to build an extravagant mansion at 665th Avenue, designed to attract maximum attention. Despite garnering accolades, the mansion failed to gain the social approval that Alva and her husband Willie desired, particularly from Caroline Astor, a prominent figure in high society. To outshine her rival, Alva announced plans for an extravagant costume ball, which was to be the most lavish event New York had ever seen. She scheduled the ball after the usual social season, after Easter, making it an unusual and daring move. The news of the ball was strategically leaked to the press, creating anticipation and excitement. Some of the remarkable details included Invitations extended to around 1300 guests Engagement of two orchestras and an elaborate dinner for entertainment The purchase of thousands of out-of-season orchids and American Beauty roses from Charles Clunder, a renowned society florist, at a cost of approximately $11,000, equivalent to $220,000 in 2008. Alva's plan was to make a bold statement and elevate her social status, and the extravagant ball was her way of achieving this goal. The guest list was the talk of the town, and people from all over prepared elaborate costumes for the occasion. Even Carrie Astor, the daughter of Mrs. Astor, practiced for the event. To secure her daughter's invitation, Mrs. Astor finally acknowledged the Vanderbilt's social standing by presenting her calling card at their doorstep. Caroline Astor and Alva Vanderbilt never met face to face, but the presentation of the calling card marked Caroline's acknowledgement of the Vanderbilt family's social standing. The Vanderbilts had gained formal recognition and acceptance from the New York Society's arbiter. That afternoon, invitations were delivered to Mrs. Astor's mansion, signaling the end of their feud, with Alva emerging victorious. As darkness descended on March 26, 1883, a crowd gathered outside the Vanderbilt mansion at 665th Avenue, held back by Metropolitan Police. At 8.30 p.m., footmen in 18th-century style maroon attire with white powdered wigs cleared the sidewalk and rolled out a gold-edged maroon carpet from the awning to the street. Carriages arrived at 10 p.m., carrying guests dressed as historical and mythical figures. Inside, the rooms were adorned with orchids, palm fronds, and thousands of roses. The scene was described as an oriental dream and unmatched in both Republican America and Europe's courts. The evening featured beautiful women and distinguished men from various backgrounds mingling, dancing, and promenading. Caroline Astor attended the event dressed as a Venetian princess in a dark blue velvet gown adorned with gold thread, pearls, and lace. She showcased most of her diamonds, including a tiara, drop earrings, necklaces with immense collet diamonds, and various diamond accessories, perhaps to make a statement. Caroline Astor and Alva Vanderbilt, accompanied by Ward McAllister, obsessed the costumes at Alva's extravagant ball. While Ulysses S. Grant and William Henry Vanderbilt chose traditional white tie and tails, others in the Vanderbilt family embraced opulent attire. Cornelius Vanderbilt came as Louis XVI, adorned in a cream satin surcoat with gold and silver embroidery, a powdered wig with a feathered tricorn hat, and a diamond-studded sword. His wife, Alice, donned an electric light-themed gown from Worth of Paris, featuring yellow and white satin with pearl and gold thread embroidery, and she carried a gilded torch with a concealed battery, sparkling with diamonds. Alva's sister-in-law, Eliza Vanderbilt Webb, dressed as a hornet with brown velvet and yellow satin, complete with diamond antennae. 
Willy Vanderbilt portrayed the Jew de Guise, an ironic choice given the historical connection to the Chateau de Blois, the inspiration for the new Vanderbilt mansion. The spotlight, however, remained on Alva Vanderbilt, who stood in her Francois I salon in a Venetian princess costume, wearing a yellow and white brocade and blue satin gown from Worth in Paris, reminiscent of Caroline Astor's attire. She was a vision of splendor. By 11 that night, the participants in the six quadrilles gathered on the third floor gymnasium, while other guests filled the main floor rooms. A trumpet fanfare from the top of the grand staircase signaled the start of the procession. Colorfully costumed dancers paraded down the immense staircase, moving through the halls to the grand dining room. The ball commenced with the hobby horse quadrille, featuring dancers in scarlet hunting coats, white satin vests, and yellow satin knee breeches, with the ladies also in scarlet hunting coats and white satin skirts. They used horse-like props made from shells covered in horse hides for an elaborate performance. Following this, guests enjoyed the Mother Goose Quadrille with fairy tale characters, the Opera Quadrille featuring famous opera costumes, and the Star Quadrille where young ladies wore gowns with twinkling electric lights in their hair. Next was the Dresden China Quadrille with ivory satin costumes and white powdered wigs resembling porcelain, followed by the Go As You Please Quadrille with various costumes. The scene was a stunning display of colors and costumes, as described by the New York Herald. At 2 a.m., an eight-course supper was served in the transformed third-floor gymnasium, resembling a tropical forest garden with palm fronds, ferns, roses, orchids, and electric lights. An enormous palm tree with bougainvillea and Chinese lanterns adorned the center. Two artificial fountains provided ambience as guests dined. The festivities continued with more dances and concluded with a lively Virginia reel, ending at 6 a.m. The city's newspapers heaped praise on the event the following day, with the New York Sun describing it as surpassing any ball in lavish spending and dazzling attire ever seen in the city. The New York World called it an unparalleled event in the city's social history and unquestionably the most brilliant and picturesque entertainment ever witnessed in New York. And that wraps up our exploration of the Ava Ball, a glittering jewel in the crown of Gilded Age extravagance. Alva Vanderbilt's audacious move to conquer high society left an indelible mark on New York's social scene. If you found this journey into the past as captivating as we did, please support our channel by liking this video, sharing it with history enthusiasts, and subscribing for more enthralling stories from the past. We'll continue to bring you the tales that make history come alive.